So I've let a few months tick by to wait for the next war to pop up, and we have one. But before I get into that, I want to discuss the amazingness, I guess, of the Europeans. The fact that they have managed to somehow make it over towards Eastern Asia, and they have a chance of maybe taking away some of the base tax that we thought was going to go to Assyria, Persia, Sweden, or the Byzantium Empire. But before we discuss that, we need to first talk about Sweden, because Sweden seems like the biggest empire that is most affected by those Europeans running over and actually taking away some lands, I guess some provinces away from Eastern Europe. I don't know what's going on with the Terra Incognita here, but interesting. Um, anyways, yes, yeah, so they were the most impacted. They they cut off Russia. They were about to cut off the, the, cut off the Byzantium Empire, but, you know, lucky for them, the Persians didn't decide to expand too much, or what might have been the case is that they had to deal with a lot of smaller provinces out this way uh, and then you know Byzantium obviously got a whole bunch of big ones. Look at that huge chunk right here. So that was probably more than likely what happens. Persia continued to expand. Um, it was just Byzantium got lucky and, and had, you know, grabbed bigger provinces. Sweden is technically winning the font game. For a lot of EU4 players out there, They a lot of them would consider Sweden winning because they have the biggest font. Um, even though they're ranked 18th in this world, and, and I've discussed this so many times uh, in this campaign, it's just the provinces are huge and they're not very valuable. Um, but that's why it looks like Sweden's stronger than they actually are. You know, France controls almost probably just as many provinces as Sweden. They're a lot more smaller. They're a lot smaller as well as they uh, have more more base tax. They have more manpower. There's more development going on here. So, yeah, that might be explaining a little bit here. But like, like I said, I wanted to focus on Sweden just because they are probably going to take the most damage. Because if they got to East China, they would have gotten really, really rich. And they probably would have been able to cut off the Byzantium Empire. But because the Europeans are here, it makes things way more difficult. More than likely, they won't be as strong as we initially thought that they would be uh, by the last like 100 turns of the game. So, uh, in terms of their king, they have a 251, good in diplomatic in the diplomatic category. He's 30 years old, so not that old, actually. Uh, their heir is 23, I think arguably a much better king one day at a 5-3-2. They have all level 1 advisors, pretty good, 6-9-5 across the board. A few country modifiers, but we're not going to go into all of that. Their economy is doing pretty good at 14.56 ducats, um, and they have four enemies. They have rivaled France, Germany, and Russia. Uh, the Celts are the ones, they're, they're also their other enemy. Uh, they're allied to, I think we discussed this, Poland, Riga, uh, the Netherlands, and England. That is it for them for now. Uh, but yeah, pretty good alliances, and that's why Sweden, I think, is just so powerful. Uh, we've seen the AI do this quite a lot. They lower army maintenance and fleet maintenance, which is pretty smart. Uh, technologies are technically a little bit behind, which I'm sure if they if they get up this this category, both all three of these categories, they'll be doing a little bit better. Actually, they can probably upgrade right now, but I'm not going to mess with the, uh, the, what the AI is doing. Again, we've seen this quite a few times before, uh, AIs grabbing enti the entirety of idea groups. Pretty crazy stuff. Um, they went down offensive, religious, defensive, uh, influence, economic, and diplomatic ideas. They only have three colonists, and that's really what kind of explains, like, yeah, they, these provinces are huge. It looks like they've, you know, I thought they had, like, five or six colonists somehow. They only have three, uh, and they're just really going hard for uh, that eastern land. Uh, they're four summit 67, which is really kind of bad compared to most of the world. I mean, I think the top three nations have over 100 force limit right now. Uh, they only control 51 of that 67 force limit. Pretty good naval navy. I mean, uh, definitely Brazil knows that, am I right? Uh, too soon. Too soon, Drew. And an okay general at a four shock. They have no, uh, they have no colonies and as well as uh, no vassals either. And they're also fully Catholic. Yep, and they're continuing to spread things more and more. Uh, not really too much stability effects, and uh, I, or, I mean they have a plus one stability, but I mean like they've no, not too many uh, revolt risks. So Sweden's doing okay, but they really have to figure out a way to grab a lot of this land before the Europeans do. So like I said in the intro, I let some time tick by to see which is the next war to pick to tick back up. Uh, it's pretty much just the elimination of Denmark. Now France has decided to join in uh, for Denmark's sake against the Russians, uh, William. And that's it. And Alexander. Uh, and then Riga is just going in at just going at it alone. More than likely, Riga will be the most successful uh, empire during this war uh, because they can. Pro well, actually, no. There's only more. There's only Russia's already ganged the siege. They've already sieged out this province. That was really fast. They're probably gonna get uh, Riga. Will get this one. Yeah, they'll probably get this one. And then that's it. Is that it? They only, they I didn't know they were only down to two provinces. Or did I? Maybe I knew that. Maybe I'm just smoking crack. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think they are. Wow. Well, I can't wait to see what happens between France and the Netherlands. Uh, that's always pretty interesting. As well as over the break, I'm not even going to watch that war because that's obviously uh, 
Well, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the uh, the Dutch and, and French wars that are kind of happening. But uh, France has grabbed all of Western Australia, almost all of Western Australia. That is really cool. Netherlands continuing to grab these islands. Um, Spain is still here. France is still here. The Netherlands have the right idea, though. I mean, they grabbed the islands, but immediately once they could, they went for Southeast Asia. And uh, they, these are, I mean, they're going to start to get more and more economic as they move north. So they're going to grab some stuff here, and it really is going to be a race for around this region. Because, I mean, what is this? Uh, you're looking at, there's a lot of 10s here, a lot of 8s, 9s. I mean, base tax, 8s, 8s, 12, geez, uh, 7, yeah, I mean, just over 7. Overall, that those green base taxes are really good, as well as Japan will be useful for somebody. Um, Spain has continued their colonization of, uh, of Alaska. I almost said Australia. And boom, they have actually named it the Spanish Alaska. That I, I, Some of it doesn't sound too bad. I'm just saying. Uh, it just sounds too good. I, I'm so glad. I, I feel like I need to make every campaign with these uh, messed up, uh, dyslexic New World colonies. It just makes things, it gives it, you know, personality. Am I right, guys? Am I right? I'm just kidding. I'm not right, but I'm just, I think it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, let's watch. Let's see. Let's go ahead and double check on how Napoleon is doing. Napoleon is actually, because pretty much this is, this is kind of a, a preview war of what could happen if ever France and, and, and the Netherlands just go to war, you know, mano y mano. That probably won't ever happen. They'll probably always pull down their allies. But it is interesting to watch exactly how both of these nations are going to fight against each other because they're both really, really strong. Uh, and I think a lot of people are count counting out the Dutch, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't, to be honest. I think their they they their economy is good. I think they could probably get up a lot of mercenaries if they have to uh, hire a bunch of mercenaries if they can't keep up with Napoleon in the force limit or you know the whatever regiments themselves uh, and, and manpower. They hire a bunch, hire a bunch of mercs because I'm sure I actually would think that maybe William is generating a little bit more money than uh, than Napoleon. It, it might be. Oh, here's a big one. Oh, wow. This is a 60 stack of, of, of Dutch units going to totally... Wait a second. No, it's France. No, this is, here's France up here. Uh, oh, well, you went in there. That was a mistake, Napoleon. You went in there with like 15,000 troops while... Oh, well, Russia... Oh, okay, Russia's here. Dang. Okay, well, we can't really assess this war too much because I didn't realize Russia was was so supportive of their of their buddies. Uh, I didn't think that. But I guess, I mean, there's nothing... To, oh, bam. Rig is already taking... That was a super quick war. That was a really, really quick war, and uh, that will be the fall of Denmark. Yeah, that will totally be the fall of Denmark. We will not see them again, because I think that is their last province that they control. I'm surprised they haven't pieced out yet. Are there any other war? Oh, another war popped up. Okay, so the Persians versus Byzantium. We've been seeing this re reoccurring theme for quite a long time now. Uh, now, Byzantium is only called in. Well, they called in Russia, but Russia is all the way in Western Europe right now. So Persia and allies, mainly the... Uh, Oh wow! Mainly Islamic Alliance and Poland, woo, uh, and Poland and the and the Islamic nations of this world probably going to dominate Byzantium. Uh, and actually, you know what? This is going to be really successful for Poland. They can dip into some of the really valuable lands that Byzantium controls. No offense to these provinces over here, but I mean they're just they're not as valuable as uh, as the Balkans. Um, so I mean some of them are, but uh, this stuff. If Poland grabs this, oh my goodness. That is uh, pretty scary, and I'm assuming that they probably have claims on these lands. Oh, they don't technically. Okay, they actually don't have claims. That, that's surprising. So they might they might not take anything. Maybe not. I don't know. Wait, what, what what kind of war was this that was declared? This is a jihad. Oh, it was jihad, the third Persian jihad against the Byzantine Empire. So it's not a it's not a claim war. I mean, it's not a yeah, it's not a war for a province. This is just a regular jihad war. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. I'm sure Persia's going to dominate. Oh, yeah, Poland's... Oh, I forgot the Ottomans were involved in this. So, yeah, the Byzantium Empire is probably going to get completely messed up. Now, I'm assuming that Russia's going to send their troops back, which means that William's going to lose this war against France, uh, which is fine. I'm sure Russia's still going to be able to take this final Danish province, but Russia's going to have to retreat back to the east to deal with the massive Persian army. Uh, but then again, Persia's kind of preoccupied with Assyria, so they've got time. But you got to remember that, you know, Arabia and Egypt are also involved in this war, as well as the Zulu. Oh, jeez. Wow. This These colors looking just big now. I mean, these wars are just getting so, so big. Um, very expansive. I mean, I just I can't even believe it. Even the Zulu are involved. I'm sure the Zulu probably don't have that many troops over here. But uh, I think this should be a landslide victory for the Persians and their alliances. Um, maybe not. I mean, the Ottomans aren't. That, that's right. This, this separate Ottoman Empire is 
probably not going to, that's always going to get kind of sieged out a little bit here. But as long as they take over these raw, like really powerful cities that Byzantium controls, then that's really all that matters. How does Poland feel towards, uh, via, oh, I'm sorry, uh, the Venetians? So they like Venice at 99 opinion. Okay, so I figured that would be a good kind of uh, war to pop up at some point. Poland versus Venice. They're both pretty They're pretty strong. I mean, Venice gained a whole lot of power when they just absolutely dominated the Ottomans a few videos ago. Uh, I guess the war is still going on, but actually France has been somewhat pushed back. But, I, uh, you know, there's still a 36 stack that William controls, whereas Napoleon only has a 21 stack. So, yeah, you know what? I think William is going to be okay, unless, of course, he stack wipes this 11,000, which is really possible because he's going after it right now. Where are the other French troops at? I think they just got, a, just got a, out of a separate war, so maybe that would explain it. Perhaps. Not sure. Oh, Poland's now rushing in for Russia. Wait a second. Aren't these... Didn't they have a good opinion of each other? Uh, when was that? No, no, no. They, they haven't had a good opinion of each other for a while. Yeah, so it's a negative 200 opinion from almost both of them, pretty much. Poland's opinion of Russia is negative uh, 163. I always got to remember to do that. I got to click on the nation, then click on the person that I'm actually interested to see their opinion of... So, wow. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the world doesn't like Russia right now. Um, surprising, because I really thought Russia was going to be able to dominate Assyria. Wow. So the war isn't as much of a landslide as I initially thought. Oh, another war's popped up. Yes, here it is. Spain has come to the aid of the new English. Awesome. As well as you have Alaska here, Spain, Mexico, Brazil, all against. Now, Sweden has joined in. Uh, Sweden has joined in, Zulu have joined in, and the Songhai uh, Empire. Oh my goodness, that is the most exciting war, as well as the Ger- Oh my goodness, Germany and, Aust and Austria. Okay, 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 this is way too much going on right now. We got three huge wars. The German-Austrian Nationalist War, uh, the Third Persian Jihad, as well as the New England War for Independence. So what does this mean if Brazil, if they get their independence? Does this also mean, I might even slow it down here a bit just because there's just so much awesome happening. We've got this massive war for the independence of New the English. We have obviously the Persian Byzantium Jihad as well as the German uh, conquest of Austria. So you know what? Sweden is here probably defending. I don't think they're going to travel all the way to the New World just to fight off, you know, I mean, just to help out the English Empire. The German Empire is, is much closer to the Swedish uh, lands and territory. So I don't think they're going to, you know, really, I don't invest that much time. I think they're just going to go down south. They have to t they have to take care of Riga. They have to take care of Germany. You have to fight France and Venice. A huge alliance that's formed up. Sweden is not going to be able to help out England too much. And, and just having Spain, I think Spain can handle Songhai um, and the Zulu for sure. I don't think the Zulu and Songhai are really going to do much. Well, Songhai's land... Oh, they're not landlocked, technically. They have... But I don't think they have any boats. I'd be surprised. They have eight boats, but... Still, nothing much. They're going to focus on Africa. Oh, no, who is this? Sweden, are you really going to do that? Are you really going to do that again? you got a 9 stack here, Sweden. Now, where is the rest of the Brazil? Oh, you've got... Oh, there's a 22 stack of Brazilians. Well, you better go fast, man. You better go fr fast. There's no Spanish colonies here, but there is Spanish Mexico that's a really good ally for someone like New the English because they're right here next to them, uh, and, and they have to deal with England and Louisiana as fast as they can before someone lands here. So this is a completely different independence war because the first time we saw it, it was Brazil uh, declaring the independence and New the English kind of joining in, uh, whereas now it's the exact opposite. So there's a better chance here. Uh, Rome's dealing with some rebels. I'm hoping that Spanish Mexico is actually dropping off troops. I don't know if they are. England, Louisiana, 13 stack, plus another two. Um, where is most of it? Wait a second. Are the Celts aren't involved, are they? Oh, no, they have to deal with Florida, too. Oh, it's it's, it's going to be complicated, but uh, I think last time I checked, they were winning this war. Yes, they are. It's six war score. They need about like 10 or ten or 15, maybe 20. Uh, not very high. They don't, And they need to kind of sit on the war for a little bit. They need to remain in control. This might be really bad for Sweden. If they really invested that much time in dealing with, you know, Brazil, especially because Brazil's not even the one that's trying to declare the independence. Uh, that's the surprising part involved. Actually, you know what? I don't know what Brazil's doing. They could easily wipe Sweden back over towards Europe. They're just not doing it right, right now at the moment. Maybe they're just leaving them alone. I don't know what they're doing, actually. I have no idea. I'm sure they've got their fleets over here helping out. Man, Spain joining in was pretty huge. Now, obviously, Spain's going to get just, you know, engulfed by Songhai, uh, and their colonies in Africa are going to get pretty messed up, but uh, that's fine. They can afford that. I'm wondering if Spain's actually landing or, or causing the English Navy any trouble. This is probably the coolest war we've been a part of or that I've seen. Uh, I think, obviously, the Germans are going to absolutely dominate Austria. 
Um, and then, I, 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 yeah, I, I think the same thing goes for Persia. We got to really keep an eye on this map here. We need to keep an eye on exactly what. Also, we could see even more wars pop up. It's possible. Ooh, they lost one war score. They're down to five. We could see more war scores pop up or more wars pop up because of this huge wars. All, all three of these, just huge, just all this stuff going on. So I, I, I don't know. I think that it could kind of develop into more. I mean, the Celts could even try something here. Uh, England, I think, is, they don't have any more troops in the British Isles. Maybe the Celts will join in. Now, where did the English regiments go? Here's Spain trying to help out as best they can. There's only a nine stack of Swedish. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, how are the West Indies? I'm sure we're going to see even more independence wars, especially as we approach the 1700s. Spain, Mexico is not helping out because Rome, Mexico has not given them military. Oh, they just did. They just did and say hello to Mexico. I meant to do that pun. That's my ramming skills. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I'm going to be a rapper one day. Um, so, yeah, I guess they're, the English Louisiana is going to have a really, really tough time um, dealing with, with now Sp uh, Spain, Mexico. Florida is about to get completely sieged out. It's kind of unfair because Florida's not even supposed to be here. Oh, Brazil's helping out a little bit too. 17 stack of Florida troops. Oh, and, and England. Oh, it's a lot of English troops too. So it's not just Florida. So Florida's about to get completely sieged out here. Um, English, Louisiana is kind of having a tough time as it is. Yeah, yeah they're kind of done already. I don't know how they did that, but they are pretty much done there. Occupied by the English. Okay, so the English are still occupying things. The AI needs to get smart. Here we go. That was a big one. They just stack wiped him. Ooh, ooh. So pretty much they just got stack wiped. Wow. Uh, okay, this is your time to shine. This is a really, really big moment. What You got nine war score. This is looking really, really good for the English colonies. Um, so here's Germany. Uh, kind of not necessarily, it's not a landslide against Austria. And I don't think Sweden is really helping out. I mean, they only have a nine, the 9 second. That's just an AI being unbelievably dumb. Like, this is like Civ 5 AI. I wasn't used to, uh, yeah, okay, and now look, Sweden has 10 more troops. This is this is seriously like uh, Civ 5 AI. So surprised at how, <laughs> how dumb. I thought the EU4 AI was going to be better. It's kind of a newer game, and, and you don't have to be as strategical. You know, Civ 5 AI really needs like a chess Sort of like a chess strategy, um, placement of units, stuff like that. This is much, much easier. You know what I mean? I would, I would guess. I don't know. I'm not a programmer, but I would assume that the AI, it'd be easier to program the AI to do smart things in this game. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but wow, I'm shocked that Brazil is not using those troops. So what's going on here? I want to really briefly touch upon the. I'm so glad that we went down to speed three here. I want to briefly touch upon this. How is Assyria doing? Assyria is still holding their own, surprisingly, right in the middle of the Islamic alliance, too. So that's pretty shocking. But I think a lot of people are focusing in on this part of Byzantium. Oh, they just peaced out. They just peaced out right now. Yes, so we're down to two wars. Germany is now winning their war at eight war score. Uh, looks like they didn't take... What happened here? Poland didn't take anything. Now it was a jihad, so they might not have taken much. Oh, they. I think they did. I do believe they took a little bit. Just not 100% about that. You can never tell. Netherlands are really, really colonizing this area. They're completely giving up on their new world stuff. Um, and anything else going on here? Yeah. So, no, I don't... I, I mean, as of... I, I don't see anything significant, any significant changes that happened. Maybe maybe some alliance annulling? No? No annulling of alliances? No, not from any, any of those three nations involved. Wow, that's pretty surprising. How much is Spain really helping? Besides, I mean, because you know what? The funny thing is Spain-Mexico is actually helping a little bit more, I would say, than the actual nation of Spain, surprisingly enough. Oh, and you you guys combined it. You guys messed up. You guys done goofed. Maybe you guys don't have a good general or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what your excuse is. France-Mexico? Is France at worth? I didn't know that. Oh, that's right, because Rome has come to aid of Austria. So has, uh, oh yeah. So Rome has come to aid of Austria and... When did Venice grab this? When did that happen? Now this was I did that happen? No, that that just recently happened. I'm pretty sure. I don't I don't remember the Austrian. No, no, I knew it was split. I'm dumb. I I'm not very smart. I'm not a smart man sometimes. Um okay, yes, I cannot wait for the independence war. I want to see the results of that. It looks like we will see the United States pop up here uh, as the first cameo. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.